Are things falling apart in the presidential team as accusations and denials fly between Babagana, Mangono and Abakiari on shortage on national security? And dozens of protesters have taken to the street calling for the sacking of the national chairman, Adams Oshomale. This is Plus Politics and I am Benny Ark. The National Security Advisor, NSA Babagana Monguno, has alleged that undue interference by President Mohamed Buhari's Chief of Staff, Abba Kiari, on matters of national security has slowed down meaningful progress in the fight against insecurity. Monguno also warned the nation's service chiefs against taking any further directive from Kiari. And joining us to discuss this in the studio this evening is Alester Wilcox, a political analyst. Good evening, Alester, and thank Good you evening. for joining us. Good evening. Uh, thanks for having me. It's I want to take your reaction to this claim by the NSA. What is your reaction to it? Well, it, it, it came as a, as, a, as, as a rude shock yeah. in the first thing. It came as a rude shock because um, one would have expected that at the level or at, at the level of the presidency. Yes. Because when we're talking about the presidency, we're talking about the NSA, the Secretary of the Federal Government, yes. and then the Chief of Staff. I think they constitute a greater majority of uh, the personnel within the presidency, yes. excluding the president and the vice. So one will expect that there is uh, that cordiality. Th that is meant to be like the cabal, if indeed there is a cabal well, within I, the presidency. Well, I, I wouldn't want to say that. Yes, yeah, I wouldn't want to use the, the because cabal, the cabal has been known to be in a, in a negative sense. So yeah, I wouldn't those want to use the cabal the, there. The, the process, okay. Yes, so they, are, they, they constitute the presidency. Uh, so I, one will expect that there is this cordiality of relationships because their roles are cut out. Okay, the roles of this, each of these... Uh, 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 personnel of uh, persons are cut out for yes. them. Now, uh, uh, according to uh, Major General, uh, uh, um, the, the chief of that is the NSA, NSA yeah. uh, talking about the, the chief of staff doubling into uh, security matters, which are not under his purview. So uh, it's shocking because I will expect that uh, at that level, each of these men should know their limits, except one wants to use up the power because there's all, there's been this accusation of the overbearing influence of the chief of staff. Uh, because chief of staff really is like the last bus stop before the president. It's like the bridge between every other person and the president because he directs, he is the one that directs everything that has to get to the president. Yes. So is he serving the powers or is he being, is, are these powers delegated to him? Because the president, of course, is the commander in chief. So has, has there been any point when the president delegates us commanding a responsibility to the chief of staff? as to the fact that he will hold security meetings, chair security meetings. Without the knowledge of the president. Without the knowledge of yes. the president. And the national security advisor. Because advisor yeah, the and NSA. Any, anything that has to do with security matters must get the clearance of the NSA. Of the, NSA. Yeah. the NSA is the last bus stop on security matters, matters. because he yeah. coordinates all the security apparatus, not just the military, the, all the paramilitary security agencies, SS, DSS, they all come under his purview of supervision. So now, now, some people have claimed, those who are close to this man and within the presidency, they've claimed, um, amazingly, both Kiari and um, um, Manguno are from the same Bruno state. They're from the same place and that there's been um, a, a back and forth, of a, a vendetta, a disagreement between both of them that is now coming to fore. Uh, do you think this is more of what is happening that people are not privy to or more because right now we're faced with a whole lot of security challenges? Uh, I think it's it. I think it's a fallout of what has been happening that we are not privy to. Yes. Uh, unfortunately for the uh, and the, fortunately, these men that hold the presidency are all from the northeast. They're both from Bruno State. Yes. Uh, no, I'm uh, even talking mm. of even the secretary of the federal government. Okay. Yes. Yes. He's yes. He's, he's from Adamawa State, yes. and then the NSA is from Bruno. Bruno. The, uh, the chief of the chief of staff, uh, staff is, is from, from Bruno. This is from Bruno. Yeah. So um, and then what would have expected that with what is happening in Bruno State and with the uh, entire Northeast. And these two powerful men hold such powerful responsibilities. Even the chief of army staff is from Brown State. Hold this powerful responsibility. And they should have, one should have expected that there will have been high level cordiality of relationship. They will not undermine the war that is being prosecuted there. And, and hit out the other uh, areas where we have uh, 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 security challenges. But if, before this come to the fore, there must have been an, an underlining brewing current yeah. that we are not privy to. Okay. And let's not forget something. This, the, the letter that is being brandished now was in December, sometime in December. 20, 2019, yes. yes. December 2019. 
And um, how that letter now leaked to the public today is what uh, needs to be investigated. Now, in, in, in the light of the ongoing concern of security challenges, how dangerous and unhealthy is this development between the chief of staff and the NSA? Very, very unhealthy. Very, very unhealthy. You see, uh, there was a time when, um, uh, I think it is it, during the Obama administration in the US, when various agencies were having, were, were, were at cross purposes with each other. The CIA, the, um, uh, what do you call it, the FBI, and all the agencies were working at cross purposes. And look, at some point, the president has to intervene and call every one of them as to why there is the need to share intelligence and to do things in accordance. And I think they hear that advice and some of the things that we are having. We are, we are. So if the two most powerful men in the presidency, in terms of those who have responsibilities to the director of the president in combating uh, 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 the security challenges at each, uh, at each other's throat. I tell you, it's, it, the, the, maybe, maybe that's why we're having this upsurge. Because let's not, let's, let, let, the world have ears. Let's face one for the world's life ears. Yes. Because this insurgence that is rebring itself within, the, within that enclave. Remember, for a while, they were, they were, they were at the back foot. They were, they, I, mean, I mean, they were on the defensive. For them to not start being on the offensive means they must have gotten some hint that there are that there is that all is not well within the with, with, I, mean, I, mean, I mean within the structure. Oh, yes. So one will be worried. One will get, start getting worried. Like what is coming up now? One will start getting worried as to the fact that if there are no leakages of information to even to the terrorists, if, I mean, if, if in fact, in fact, even to the enemies, that look within the I mean within the sect, sector that is supposed to uh, uh, be our abattros. That is problem. Amazing that you did mention that because he also did allege in that memo that the interference of the CSO has actually slowed down meaningful gains that Buhari had sought to achieve security-wise. I will not be surprised. Do you think this is possible? No, I, I will not be surprised because if the uh, um, see what, whatever thing we are doing here is still in the realm of conjectures. Yes. Because we do not have the full. I do not have the full details of the relationship between the NSA and, and the, the CSO. CSO. I do not have the relationship. The, 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 I, I believe that these are men that has the interest of the president at heart because the president appoints them and gives them those responsibility. I believe that these are men that have the interest of Nigerians at heart because whatever thing you are doing, you are doing it for the safety of the nation. But, but it's been claimed by some quarters that these men, this, these two men don't see eye to eye, that they're always in constant disagreement. I, 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 yeah. I, I wouldn't subscribe to that okay. because, number one, I do not, I have never seen, attended any meeting with them. I don't even know the gate of the presidency. But you see, I will still want to give the benefit of that because you see, yes, they say there's no smoke without a fire. I will still give the benefit of uh, doubt uh, to the fact that these two men come from a place that uh, from, from a, a place where there is serious humanitarian carnage going on. Serious human, uh, uh, security that is going on. And so these two men should not be, uh, it's not on, a, I mean, uh, will not be unaware of the enormous responsibility placed on their shoulder. Yes. Because they are appointed by the president and the, the, what is the, 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 of, the, of, the, of the NSA is not to provide to, 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 security. To, to, to security, to security yeah. But at the clearing house of security of the, of the, of the, of the yeah. entire country. So he understands his, his, his role. The chief of staff, who is, what is his role? He is the bridge between the president and every other, uh, every other personality. Yes. Therefore, he, the chief of staff even has more responsibility to make sure that the NSA does its job better. Rather than you stop him. Because it's he it has very among his sake cannot stand. It's only when there's a crack in the wall that Lisa can come. So I am not unmindful of the fact that since this has come to fall, before it's coming to fall like this, there will have been underground current, there will have been rumors, people are aware. Even the surgeons, even the criminal, even the enemies will have been aware that there is division among the house. So it is something that is shocking, and I would not believe that people whose houses are burning, they are busy chasing rats. I mean, that would be that, that would be very that would be, that would be very very great disservice to the president and great disservice to the nation. Now, um, interestingly, um, a, a former director in the presidency who would not want to be named said hierarchically that the chief of staff was the head of all political appointees of the president yeah. and somewhat high in rank to the NSA, but said it was not clear if he has the power to either call for or preside over meetings with the security chiefs without the permission of the president. Does he have such powers? No, he doesn't. He is like, like, like exactly so, so if it's high in he rank, is, no, he is I, the, he is the, look, he is in the, charge of all political, all appoint, political appointments, appointments for the president. For the president yes. yes. All appointments, all memos, all, in fact, he is the clearing house yes. 
for between the I mean I mean for the president's responsibility. Even the chief of even the the NSA has, wants to pass a memo for approval to the president. He passes through the chief of staffs, except the president calls directly. You want to see the president? You, you, I mean, that's to say he is the bridge. Now, ask now saying he calls a security meeting without the the, the, the person the in NSA charge and giving of, directives of to security. The chief, chiefs of, um, then something. Then, chiefs. No, no, no. Then, then if that is true. Then I think the 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 the, the CSO the, 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 the CSO has breached completely his uh, his office. And I, I read part of the letter where the NSA says he was not sworn in. He didn't swear oath to, uh, to be the chief security officer of the country, and which is true. So which is true. So I am I am I'm being very very cautious as to because I don't want this matter to be blown out of proportion. Already it is it has, it, it is bad bad enough that. It is now coming to the fore that the uh, chief of staff will be calling security meetings, giving directive to the chief of army staff and to the uh, service chiefs. Even without the knowledge, without of, the the knowledge president. of the president. Now, what does this say of the, of the, of the administration of President Marbury if any of the sayings, any of, the, of these allegations <coughs> happen to be true? Well, I pray they are not really true, but if they happen to be true, then uh, it's, it's also brought to the fact that uh, the president has delegated too much powers to his aid, to his appointees. Or the president has not uh, has not really uh, gotten a grip of those that he appointed. Yes, the, he, 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 President Obama is somebody that gives people the free way to do their jobs. He give them, he give responsibility. You see, if you discover this president that he hardly stack people, he hardly. I mean, even among his ministers, even when some some people were really so, this woman was uh, said something against him. In support of Fatiku, the, the Mataraba. Yeah. And we expect that the president will have sacked her the next day, but he didn't. Is he kept her? He's, not, he's not known for, for sacking. Yeah, he's not, he's not known for sacking. He gives people very ample opportunity to either remedy their wrongs or, you know, so he's, he's, he's that kind of president. So he gives people responsibilities. He allows you to do your responsibility. But you see, when you, when you begin to go beyond your brief and it comes to the fore, I think the president should wake up and take charge. He might have. A special interest in, um, of course, of course, for, for you to appoint a, a, a chief of staff, or somebody that you really, really yeah. trust, somebody that you know can 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 cover, can, be, can be there for you. You, you, you don't appoint somebody that you are not sure of his loyalty or his uh, that, because that is the bridge. That is the last bus stop to the president. So he must have have so much complete conf confidence in uh, Abakari. But I think if Abakari wants to take advantage of that confidence and go beyond his briefs, then, it's th then I think the president should wake up and know that uh, he, the, the country voted for him and not Abakari. Uh, the country expects if, if the administration succeeds, it is him, the president, that succeeds, not Abakari. If the country fails, if the administration fails, it is not Abakari that fails mm. or uh, Mogulin that fails, it is the president. So the president must take charge of the administration of, of his administration and know how to rein in people that are going beyond their briefs. Yeah. Now, Alexa, to, to the best of my knowledge, I know that the, the chief of staff to the president is not a, a, a presiding head of security. No. Neither is he sworn to an oath of defending the country. No. So if what the NSA is saying is anything to go by, why, why, are we, why is he having meetings with service chiefs? I mean, to what, to what, to what point? To the, to the extent of giving directives, what could that portend for us as a country? Well, it, it, it doesn't portend well, uh, I must be honest. It doesn't pretend because well. he's not a security expert. Yes, he doesn't yeah. pretend well. Well, um, he's not a security expert. As far as I know, Bakari, he was, I think he was a banker or thereabout, a businessman, banker. So he has no security uh, experiences. Through, 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 uh, through uh, trainings and other this things, he might have hints and hints of things that happen. Yes. But he needs the experts. Even, even if he wants, he needs the experts to guide him. Even President Muhammadu Baru was a retired major general of the Nigerian army who has held command responsibilities, who has held various posts, various military trainings in, every, in, in some of the best military establishments around the world, who has been the former military head of state and all whatnot. He, he still is a, a, a national security advisor that will advise him on security issues. He still needs, uh, what they call them, uh, a defense minister that will, that, that will take charge of the defense. Yes. He still needs... Uh, special advisors on certain matters as far as security is concerned. So he will not assume that he knows it. That, I'm talking about the president himself yes. now, whose uh, military credential, whose military security credentials is impeccable. But Christine, so talk left of, of Anna Bakari, who 
has always been a civilian, a political uh, appointed, and appointed as the chief of staff. So for you to now go to the extent of having uh, security meetings with, chief of, with security, uh, heads of securities and giving directives, I think it's uh, one step too far uh, of, 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 uh, of, yeah. of uh, Even Mr. in the best democracies of the world, where we, where we copy our democracy from, there's, yeah. there's a clear dichotomy between the office of the chief of staff and that of the national security there advisor. Clear, there is a clear dichotomy. Before is now, it, before now, the chief of staff's office is always, I'm, I'm sure, I'm not sure you know the chief of staff to Obasanjo. I'm not sure everybody knows him. I'm not sure anybody knows that of Yeradua, late Yeradua. I only happen to know that Ogia Dome was the chief of staff, first deputy chief of staff, then later chief of staff uh, to uh, President Goodluck Good Jonathan. Jonathan. I, I think I know it's, I think it's Ogia Dome, uh, former deputy governor of Edo State. Ogia Dome or something. Ogia Dome, yes. Uh, but today, the chief of staff to the president is in the lives of everybody. So does that mean, do you so think, do you think so the president has conferred so much undue power to, I, to the CSO? I, I, think, I think he has assumed too much on due powers. If what is coming out now is saying to go by, I think he has assumed too much powers that he, that too, were not there. Mm. And because the president is someone that trusts people with responsibilities, he might not have uh, really taken, looked at it that way. I don't know their personal relationship, how, yes. how far they've come from. But even if it's your personal friend or personal, personal, every personal, personal, Classmate, personal, everything personal, personal. Uh, there is a dichotomy between responsibilities when it comes to public service. And that, and that should be clearly respected because that is also a mark of responsibility. If you, are, if you are irresponsible to your duty, you are responsible to the president, you are responsible, then you don't do anything that will bring disrepute to the president. Yeah. Because right now what is happening is that people are, I mean, tongues are wagging. President is not in control of his men. Which he that the fool has been talking all this, all this while. In, 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 you know, the time the wife had, I mean, the wife issue came up, the family issue came up. Yes. And the wife was like, oh, look, this, this is the same man that the wife was pointing, accusing finger on us, happened to have hijacked, hijacked. Yes. The, 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 the administration. Yes. I even hijacked his husband. He doesn't, he doesn't even have the kind of assets you should have to, 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 to a husband. So if all this are happening and these are coming to fall, that it is not even the Head of the clearing, the head of the clearing house of, this, of security in the country, that is now raising this issue. Uh, then uh, it, it 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 needs to be looked into. Now, if if I'm correct, and I think I am, the, the NSA's office is not in the villa, unlike that of the CSO. So so why why is this battle for supremacy and rivalry? No, I I, well, I, don't okay. I I don't know where where the offices are situated. I don't know where the offices are situated. But uh, even if it is situated anywhere, it is part of the presidency. So these are the people that works directly for the president. The National Security Advisor, he is the, he's like the policeman of the president. So he works within the president. I don't know where his office is located. But it doesn't matter where your office is located. What, what, what matters is the responsibility your office has. Okay? That's what her matters. The responsibility your office has. Yes. The, the Secretary of the Federal Government, I don't know, his office is not located in the... I'm not sure he's located in the villa. I don't know where the office is located. But what matters is, is the responsibility you have to perform. You can perform it from the sky, from the moon, from Bauchi, from anywhere. But if that responsibility is laid on your, on, on, on your laps to do, the Mozilla responsibility, it doesn't give, even if uh, the chief of staff's office is within the president's office, maybe the next table to the president's office, if you are not responsible to hold these security meetings, you don't do that. So it doesn't matter what office. It's unconstitutional. It's unconstitutional. It's unconstitutional. If the president delegates to you to do so, then you do so and report back to the president. But I, I, can, I cannot imagine a security meeting without the NSA. I can't imagine a security meeting without the NSA. Being presided over by the CSO. Even if, even if the CSO has to preside over such meeting. It should be president. On the instruction of the, the president. president. On behalf of the I president. I cannot see a security meeting without the NSA. Because what are you going to discuss? Who will you get a report from? The chief of, even if you get it from the chief, what is the responsibility of the NS? This is one that's supposed to clear. The president cannot travel without the clearance of the, of the, of, 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 of the NSA. It, it don't, it don't, the NSA has the responsibility to give that clearance. You don't just bond the president, I mean, the, the chief of staff, you bond the president to the can say, let's go, let's go take, take a bottle of beer outside the villa or somewhere, or let's travel to, to New York, or let's. The NSA has to clear that.
That's his responsibility. Right. The commission might come to the president through the chief of staff. Yes. But that question must come from the NSA. The because NSA. if anything happens to the president in terms of security breaches, who, who, who's going to be held responsible? The NSA is liable. Oh, come on. That's what it. are we now, talking about? Now, in the light of the ongoing um, security challenges in the country, there's been calls and clamor for the sacking of the service chiefs. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to this? As um, much as many people have said it's not going to be so much of a sacking than them leaving because most of them have, have passed um, their tenor and the age, the age limit mm -hmm. attached to their office. What's your reaction to this? I am not a fan of this... Uh, Misplaced call. Which of the services are you talking about? Are you talking about the chief of the naval staff? Or the chief of air staff? I think I must be very clear here. Everybody's pointing to one person, the chief of army staff. That, chief of army that's staff, what yes. seems to be in the matter of everybody. Because that is, for me, that's what it seems to be in the matter of, any, of anybody. When it's that service, that service, okay, are you saying that the Navy, the, the chief of naval staff has been having, have not been up to his responsibility? I would think that the chief of air staff has not been up to his responsibility. Unfortunately, we have the chief of army staff who has a direct combat on his hand. And since and when he took up office, you know, we know the gains he made. Let's not forget too much. It's the problem with us in Nigeria, we forget too quickly where we are coming from. Who, I mean, do, do we remember where we are coming from in 2016 when this man took over office? He took over office in 2016. The other people were there. The president retained Miniman Co. until about 2016 before, before they were sacked, before they were retired. So do you know the gains that we had, that Brutai made? Do you know the, 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 the re-motivation that Brutai did for the army, for them to have been have the sources that they had up to uh, so far? So we, we don't need to be un, ungrateful to the our men and women in uniform. We don't need to be to, 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 to downplay their efforts. Brutai is a professional soldier. If the president chooses to keep Brutai, that is president's responsibility. Nobody, the president has, has the prerogative to appoint chief of I mean service chiefs. So since that project arrives with the president, it is not, and the president sees what you are not seeing. There are things he sees that you are not seeing. So what is, your, what is our own to always shout? Okay. I know that some people want to go and do protests, staff, uh, chief, uh, service chief protests. I, I mean, it's like, are we not, are we that, are we that jobless? Now, but the current strategy they're, they're employing to fight insurgency and all of the kidnappings and banditry going in the country seems not to be effective any longer. Now, would you blame it on strict, strictly on the security architecture of the country or they need to re-strategize? No, no. The, right. the, 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 biggest, the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. And don't forget, as you are, plan, as you are planning, the enemy is also not sleeping. They're also planning. How, 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 all, how long has the, the Afghanistan war been going on? It's still on. America, with all the strategic powers, with all the military mind, intelligence power, were they, are they able to, 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 to wipe out insurgents in Afghanistan? Uh, today, I mean, even, 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 even in the mainland United States, are we not having school shootings and uh, shootings? And, I mean, ter ter in fact, call it domestic terrorism in the U.S. with all the strategic and everything. You know, say the, because of that, all the chief police will be, should, be, should, be, should be sacked or should be... Look, we are having a problem on our hands. What is the alternative to the sacking of the security chiefs? Look, it's, to, it's for yeah. them to be encouraged to be proven better. Look, is it, is it equipment? Is it, uh, uh, is it training? Every, every day we come on TV, people who, are, who, who have not even seen a pistol, cannot even have uh, uh, a pistol from a beret gun, come, and, come to TV and talk about security issues. When you, you don't know a jack about security issues. Do you think the military is under-equipped? I believe so. Okay. Yes, the military might be under-equipped because we have not gotten to the level of sophistication because it seems this these bandits these insurgents are always a step ahead of our military they not, every time they're not a step ahead what are we having mm. now we're not having a direct confrontation they're not having a direct confrontation mm. remember before now medugri township was a no-go area i keep telling people some things before 2007 uh, 16 academy was not playing their matches in medugri academy football club nobody was nothing was happening medugri was like a shut down town but are people not, uh, but it's, since 2017, Academy has returned back to Medugri. So there's relatively, there's relative progresses that has been uh, sustained. The enemy, they are, the, this is a war that has no front line. You don't know the front line. The front line can be in your backyard. These are people that come in, hit and run. These are people that, that, that has no face, no form. They come in, they hit, they run. They hit target, they hit soft target, they run. And then, we, they, and then, and then what we do, what do we do? Anytime they hit, and run, we publicize it, and they think they have it in the upper hand. But when our military is on the offensive and, and, and decapitate most of them and, and put the, most of, most of their, uh, this in action, we don't give that kind of publicity. So even our reportage, 
It's helping the way, uh, the, the, the way our reportage goes. It's helping the insurgents to think, the enemy to think that they have it the upper hand. Because every time, open your TV now, by 10 o'clock news, let there be one uh, incident in, uh, in maybe Brunu, one village is bombed in Brunu, that will be the first news. Meanwhile, there will have been thousands of cases where our military will have decapitated a lot of all these people that will come uh, maybe at the stream end news or just one flash news. We are not helping in our reportage. Our reportage should change. Because we are over bloating these security For me, we're even over bloating these security challenges. It's not as bad as we bloat it. It's, we have it on hand, it's bad. But the way we over bloat it on TV, it gives the enemy impression that they are winning this, that, that, that they have an upper hand. Meanwhile, our gallant troops and men and men in uniform are sweating it out and giving these people a bloody nose. We should concentrate on those things and not rather do you think, on what they are doing. Do you think, in the light of all of th that's been happening, do you think our military is winning this war against oh, the Oh, sure, they are. They are. Because if the military is not winning this war, look, take it from 2000 and to take it, take it, let me just say, from 2014, when bombs were raining in Abuja, every, every corner of the, of the country, that is, what year was the United Nations house bombed? By this same Boko Haram, 2014. That was 2014, yes. Shop malls in Abuja, markets in Abuja. That is the nation's capital. See, about 16 local governments. Goza, Goza town was the headquarters was the headquarter of, of Boko Haram with their, with, their, with, with their flags. Has all that not changed for a long time? Have they taken over those words again? They have, they, they, what, 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 they, what they are doing now is on the fringes. And again, let's, let, let's face one fact. Our military is, is living straight. What is the size of our army? Bruno State alone, Bruno State alone, if you put all that military, let's say 10 meters each from each other, put all of them, the 10 Nigerian military, put them 10 meters each away from each other, so stand sentry 10 meters away. Then Tempestry will not cover Bruno State's speech. All right, Alistair, hold your talk right there. Right now, we're being joined by retired Air Vice Marshal Femi Badebo online. Good evening, Femi, and thank you for joining us. Good evening. Yes, I want to have your reaction um, to, to the claim being made by the National Security Advisor, that is Babagana Manguno, alleging undue interference by President Mahmoud Bari's Chief of Staff, Abba Kiari, on matters of national security. How do you react to this claim by him? Um, I don't think it's a claim. It's um, it's it's frustration. Um, when you can settle things in house, then you have to cry out. Um, I'm not sure the letter written to the service chiefs is actually the best way to go about it because it's about flexing muscle there. But if you are in charge of security, national security, um, nobody should be holding a meeting. Um, without you being involved. So how unhealthy and dangerous would you say this development is if the National Security Advisor is calling out and saying there are meetings, there are directives being given to the service chiefs, even without the knowledge of the president? How unhealthy and dangerous is that for the country? Well, I wouldn't know if they were without the knowledge of the president. You recall that at the beginning of this administration, Mr. President actually said the minister should go through his chief of staff. Um, as long as he's not on seat, especially when he's out of the country, I can assure you the chief of staff is one person who can reach him at will. And so uh, when he talks to people, sometimes it is to be assumed that he's speaking on behalf or with the authority of the president. Uh, how you confirm that is another issue. Um, if you think that it's not going as it is, then you do what the National Security Advisor has done. Uh, but it, it's, it's unfortunate that it has to enter this level. Well, he also did say in the memo that the interference of the CSO had slowed down meaningful progress that the president hoped to have achieved security-wise. How, how so? How do you think this is possible? Well, in, it, it is definitely confusing, even for the service chief. Um, you move on orders, and you also halt movements on orders. You remember that the whole area is a multinational area. Um, so you don't pursue, let's say, uh, the terrorists into your neighbor territory when your neighbors are supposed to be manning that area. And so sometimes there will be counter instructions that may go from president to president and need to be passed down 
urgently. Uh, and so if that happens, yes, sometimes the NSA may not, um, may not be informed immediately. And then you get this kind of frustration that we're seeing now. But, but is it constitutional for the, the service chief to be holding security meetings and giving um, instructions, directives to service chief without the presence of the NSA? Well, the structure, when you look at the structure of the, um, or the defense structure in Nigeria, you will see that um, the position of chief of defense staff came much later. And then the position of national security advisor came even much later. And at no time they did quite state clearly who was under who. We, we have just been operating on the system where the holder of the Office of Chief of Defense Staff and national security advisor are senior. Even if maybe NSA is retired, they're senior to the service chiefs, which in military already connotes some kind of uh, command structure. Okay. Now, um, yeah. Now, uh, uh, hierarchically, it, 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 it is mm -hmm. said that the the office of the CSO is um, is a bit. It's kind of higher because he's in charge of all political appointment of the president. Do you think this makes his position higher than that of the NSA? Well, you see, the way we operate, even if you see the American system. Um, once there is an individual in the presidency who has access to Mr. President, unofficially he becomes like superior to other people. When you have a diplomat, a seasoned diplomat handling that, or at least somebody who cares about diplomacy handling that office, he will operate under subtle moves. But uh, sometimes we end up with an individual who just couldn't be bothered. And uh, so when he gives an instruction, if you think it is counter to what you discussed with Mr. President, let's say two days ago, it's now left to you to get to Mr. President and confirm the order. And like I said, there are times when it is not so easy for even the NSA to reach Mr. President. Before I let you go, um, retired Air Vice Marshal, if the memo and the content of it is anything to go by, do, would you say the CSO is too reaching and is waiting on due powers? I will just say that, you know, um, they need to tidy up their acts. Um, it, is, it is not good, particularly at this time, when uh, we're having all these issues about the service chiefs and also the fight against Boko Haram. Um, they really need to get their act together because um, one thing you try not to do is to document some issues. Once you put things on paper, uh, there are all kinds of molds in the system that will make it go public. And, you know, some with bad intentions, some with good intentions. It's like, okay, now they're trying to put Mr. President in a fix to take a decision. And, um, well, we'll wait and see what happens. Retired Avas Marshal Femi Badabo, thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution. You're welcome. Would you agree with his last statement that they're trying to put the president in a fix yes. with, with all of this yeah. bickering and back yeah, and forth? It seemed, it seemed not in my head when he was saying that. I think the, 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 the greatest embarrassment will be for the president. Because right now, it's, right now the, the entire country will want the president to act. And uh, sincerely, uh, Abakari has not been in the, in the best book of, the, of most people in the country, both enemies and foes, both enemies and friends uh, uh, of the presidency. Abakari has not been in there. But I think the president has a lot of respect and, um, and trust for and confidence Abakari. for Abakari, because for him to have retained him again for a second term. So uh, uh, the, the actions of these two men, uh, these two noble men, is really, really, really rub off on the president. Because people expect the president to react. But again, the president is somebody that takes, keeps his calm. Will this tongue wear the way without him altering the world? I hope so. Political for both of them to analyst to this, into the room and, and really Wilcox, the thank stuff. you very much for your contributions on this segment. And way. thank you for staying with us. The clamor for Shomele Sack is up next for discussion after this short break. Do stay with us.